I think it's now officially spring in New Zealand, which means the clocks have gone forward an hour, which means I don't have to get up quite as early to get a sunrise shot. I've got up a bit too early because I've kind of, I forgot the clocks went forward. So anyway, so I'm up way, way, way too early for this, but hey, that's, that's okay. Just out of town, there's a little village called Bridge Pa. Pa is the Maori word for, for village or settlement. I'm not sure why they call it bridge. Bridge Pa? Because I don't think there's a bridge there. Is there? I don't think there is. I'll have to look that up. I'll find that out and I'll, I'll, I'll stick a link in the description to show, say why it's called Bridge Pa. Just on the left hand side as you go into the village, there's an old shack, an old house. And it's been there, I don't know, a long time. And it's in rack and ruin. I tell you, the, the bones, the bones of it look great. For, for me, I've renovated a few a few bad houses in my time and uh, done them up and, and turned the ram smack with ass and got them looking pretty shiny. I'd love to have a go at that one. It's, it's a beauty. The bones are there. The structure's there. New roof, full decoration throughout. Repile the floors. New kitchen, new bathroom. New carpets throughout. Lick of paint everywhere. Oh, my, you could turn it around and, and shine that up very nicely. But I'm not going to do, uh, because I'm just going to go there and photograph the thing. And as the sun comes up, you get a shot of this thing. And because the... Quite noisy. Because of the old timbers on the on the building, it comes up really nice when, when the first light of day hits it. It looks absolutely stunning. We're going to shoot it on medium format. Got a 50mm lens and the 75mm lens. For this shot, I'll possibly use the 75. I'm going to put the 50 on initially, but I'm, I'll probably put the 75 on. There's a driveway that goes up towards the local Marai, which is a the Maori name for a meeting house. So I think that's private land. So I, I don't actually think I can go on there without getting permission. That's, you've got to... You've got to follow cultural protocols uh, to, to go onto a marae. But I'm not actually going onto it, am I? I'm just going to be walking up the drive. So maybe I'll see how the land lies. I don't want to tick anybody off. But I think, you know, maybe shooting from the roadway. Put the 75 mil on just to draw it a little bit closer. But I want to put it in its surroundings as well. So I want it to, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to shoot tight in on the building. I want to shoot the surroundings, its environment. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to look quite nice, quite atmospheric. The one thing that could let me down, cloud we've got quite a lot of cloud overhead which is which is a good thing because i don't want uh, i don't want crystal clear skies i've i've done a couple of shoots lately up in the mountains where it's been crystal clear skies and to be honest with you i mean they're on previous videos although i like the photographs and i like the i like the sort of composition of the photographs uh, i hate the skies it's just it's just bland a, a plain blue sky is just bland as uh, it's okay for some bathers, uh, not for photographers. That cloud overhead stays there, and then we get a slither. This is this is this is in an ideal world. We get a slither, a small band of light on the eastern horizon. As the sun comes up, bang! It throws. Uh, it just illuminates the scene with gorgeous golden light, and then click. Maybe two shots, and then I'm out of dodge. If we get the sunlight, I think that's going to be the killer shot. So dawn shot and sunrise shot, and then I'm spinning around. And I'm back to work. Okay, so uh, listen, thanks for sticking with this little baby. Uh, as soon as as soon as I get there, I don't think there's going to be much opportunity to to vlog the situation uh, because I'm going to be working pretty fast on this one. With a bit of luck, you'll see a nice little photograph or two at the end of this. The camera I'm going to be using today for this shoot is the Bronica ETRSI. Yet again, I'm I'm just I can't put this thing down. I'd take it to bed with me if I could. She's she's just oh she's so sexy. Calm down, Paul. What are you doing? She, she's just a cracking camera. Absolutely love it to bits. So I'm going to be using the ETRSI 50mm and 75mm lenses, depending on which looks best out there in the field. Handheld meter to record the light. And the film stock I'm using is going to be Kodak Hectar 100. And uh, that is that is just a... Oh, again, another beautiful film. All right, guys. So uh, let's crack on. You do some wittering, Paul. You really do. So that didn't really work out the way I wanted it. Unfortunately, the light didn't play ball. Yesterday didn't really happen. I got a shot at dawn, which didn't really do much. I got a slither, an absolute slither of light, which I was hoping for, but unfortunately it didn't last. I mean, we're talking slithers. This was a ridiculously slithery piece of slither. Just didn't last long at all. I'm hopeful that I've got a shot out of that, but I won't know until I get the uh, the film back. It's crystal clear out west. There's a big bank of cloud on the eastern horizon, but the sun's still getting through it. It's just on sunrise now, so you can see just in the foreground there, and just a little bit of colour on the front elevation of the of the of the subject. 
so we are getting a little bit of light on there so i'm going to get my ass out of the van head over there and get a couple of nice shots because uh, it is looking pretty pretty nice out there all right guys let's work So that eventually worked out well. I had to wait quite a while for the sun to clear that uh, that bank of cloud, and when it did, got exactly what I wanted. I, I'm not exactly what I wanted. If I'd have been a real stickler, I would have wanted a bit more cloud out west above the shack. That would have been uh, that would have finished it off nicely. As it as it is, we got a, a plain blue sky, which is okay. As I'm stood in the paddock waiting for the light, this uh, this this fella turned up in his ute and his uh, and a trailer on the back there, and I thought, oh shit, here I go, I'm in trouble coaching one of the people's land I'm bothered so I put my big smiley face on and, and charmed my way through the guy and uh, he was a good lad salt of the earth guy called Stan part of the I think he's part of the wider Farno that's family in Maori who own that land and that that particular house so he's just delivering a few old timbers just to just to shore up the building until the Farno decide what they're going to do with the shack but it's stunning he was telling me that there's a uh, they're constantly getting artists and, and other photographers who just sort of pull up at the side of the road, set up their easels and tripods and whatever, and they just they just photograph that and paint it. And, and I can see why. It's an absolutely stunning, stunning piece of architecture. Anyway, guys, I think we call this a wrap for now. Uh, got the shot I was looking for, which is uh, that old shack bathed in beautiful morning light. Absolutely stunning. I would have loved to have flown the drone around there, but there's an aerodrome right on the doorstep of, uh, of Bridge Park and uh, you have to get uh, you have to get permission to fly any drones around the area uh, so that's yeah that's that's maybe one for another day when I've got time I'll get permission and uh, and just do a bit of a fly past quite interesting for now from New Zealand on what was a cold start but it's going to be an absolutely belting day hope you're all well wherever you are in this mad world and uh, until next episode 